How you guys doing? Our lead story today is going to be a bandito that was shot because he came over from the Rebels Motorcycle Club. Yes, crazy Aussies are at it again. Ooh, in Germany, I hear that the police just raided the banditos because they were banned. So they went and just took the clubhouse. Just took it. Gone. Bye-bye. Man, aren't you glad you live in the United States of America? Even though it's not as free as it used to be, but at least we got some type of laws, man. They just went in there and took it. Unbelievable, baby. Anyway, we're going to go to our first story. We're going to jump in this right away. From the DailyMail.com. Tattooed bikey, that's what they call outlaw bikers over in Oz, was shot when he got out of his BMW. This is our lead story. He recently defected from the rebels to the banditos as tensions rise between the two gangs. You got to take a lot of what comes out of Australia, New Zealand's media with a grain of salt. I'm talking neat. This is like their number one stories that happen in their papers over there. Uh, they even covered the Instagrams of some of these guys. That's how bad it is. So take it with a grain of salt. Man shot three times. He is identified as a former Rebels bikey patched over to the Banditos. He was 28 years old when he was shot and he stepped out of a BMW. And former Bandidos members said gang was recruiting and steered tension with rival. One thing with a lot of MCs is they got different nationals and stuff and a lot of different ways things work in their country. It's a whole different culture. Uh, he was taken to a hospital in serious condition and allegedly refused to cooperate with police. Uh, detectives allege it was a targeted shooting as tensions escalate between the two outlaw gangs. Uh, former Banditos member claims the gang is on the hunt for new recruits again. Go figure with the Daily Mail. There's some of the pictures and stuff that spray down BMW. Uh, quote, the Banditos are, they keep on repeating that and repeating it. Unbelievable. Uh, images uh, from the scene show the bearded 28-year-old man near naked and covered with tattoos on a stretcher with a blanket over his thighs and groin area. Thanks for that uh, commentary there. Uh, Bloodstained desire, designer Fetty paper carrier bag. Yeah, they got some styles over there, man. There's the burnt-out car. Uh, they lit it up, man. They really did. They lit it up. Uh, witnesses from the scene, I ran into the street after we heard the explosions. I was 43 years in the Army and artillery, so I recognized it as explosions immediately. Like I said, the Daily Mail, they're freaks. You gotta take things with a grain of salt with these people, man. Because the whole story could have been summed up in like two paragraphs but no they gotta take up everything man they just keep going and going now over to cbr city news again <laughs> politics former rebels member arrested in police raids got a good picture of brass knuckles right there 25 year old man was arrested after police seized two knuckle dusters we call them brass knuckles, but hey, they're everywhere. A taser, $2,890 in cash. You probably ain't going to get that back. Uh, one gram of a substance to believe to be cocaine, drug paraphernalia, mobile phones, and steroids. Yeah, man, you guys are over there. You're always trying to beef up on steroids, man. Go, you know, go natural, man. That's what I say. It's going to make your penis smaller if you're using that steroid stuff and you won't ever get a woman. 
The man who police believe was until recently a member of the Rebels outlaw motorcycle gang was arrested at his Isabella Plains home. Uh, he was granted bail and will appear in the ACT Magistrates Court on the 23rd of February to face charges including possession of drug of dependence for sale, possession of a drug of the same thing with you guys. All you doing repeating stuff, man. Just tell the story. That's all. Uh, the ongoing investigation by, uh-oh, here we go, Task Force Nemesis. Man, they got all these kind of uh, nicknames for these task force. To target outlaw motorcycle gangs has already seen a man charged with drug trafficking, another charge with drug and firearm offenses. So... Digging down, 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 down over there, man. Uh, good news, good news here. Uh, Harry Dunn trial is set for January. And that had a deal with Dunn, who was 19. He died after a collision with the car while riding his motorcycle near RAF uh, in 2019. And uh, I, I don't know if, yeah, is this, yeah, diplo, this is the one with the diplomat. Uh, the immunity and all that stuff that she uh, claimed, you know, that has to go right out the door. In a case like this, I can't believe the United States never turned her over. That's BS, if you ask me. Uh, Miss uh, Sakalas was with causing the death. That's who uh, she was. That's her that was charged in this. Uh, did they ever extradite her over there? Uh, doesn't say. Uh, no, they're declining extradition, and it's going to be still hell, uh, hurt over there. You know what? Throw her ass over there, man. That's BS. Really, man. You kill a kid? Really? Diplomatic immunity! Idiots. Out of Boston, new uh, NH motorcycle shop asked for help finding masked thieves. I guess it was a New Year's Day heist and it netted more than $50,000 worth of dirt bikes. New Hampshire motorcycle shop is asking for the public's help in trafficking down at least five masked thieves. That made off with more than $50,000 worth of that, man. Helmets, bikes, you know, hopefully they know how to hock that stuff. But, hey, I'm just asking. Uh, it happened in Wyndham, New Hampshire on New Year's Day. The mask intruders made their way into the Knott's Power Sports before 4.30 a.m. They set off a security alarm. And the officer arrived shortly after and found the broken front window. There's some of the pictures. All masked up, man. They don't want to get COVID. <laughs> There's five of them. Uh, they, they were seen uh, going on dirt bikes. Let's see if it plays out. Yeah, you, you see some of them. Ah, there they go. They're going after the good ones right there. Real good ones right there. Whoo! Uh, so if you uh, see any dirt bikes running around, you know who took them. <laughs> uh, good news here, uh, the 2022 uh, BSA Gold Star First Look, that is a beautiful machine right there. And it, it harkens back really to their 1950s and 1960s style. Now, these are built in India, man. India, they just love this type of bike. Uh, I think India has to be the British's market's most freaking, you know, they come up money over the fist for these bikes. That, Royal Enfields. Uh, this one's a 650 liquid cooled uh, BOHC. And I know Harley-Davidson has their 2022 models uh, set out for later this month, the 22nd. Don't quote me. I don't know on that. Uh, and it goes on to say Indian money has saved classic British motorcycling names more than once in the past. And now BSA is the latest brand to return to the market under Indian ownership. As such, it joins Royal Enfield, the company that has been uh, Indian-owned for decades, and Norton. 
which was revived from bankruptcy in 2020 by India's uh, TBS group. Uh, so they got the old names, but it's no longer all uh, Brits, okay? It's kind of like Harley Davidson. They try to buy them out. Uh, yeah. I can see that coming uh, in the future. Uh, so that one's going to be made out of India. Still a nice looking bike, man. Y you got to give it to them. Nice looking bike. Uh, KTM is announcing the new 1290 Super Adventure models coming to the U.S. Uh, because right now these are being built in Europe and stuff. These are coming over here. The, man, the off-road market is just really blowing up. And that's the picture of the 2022 KTM 1290, the Super Adventure S. I guess they're going to try to give uh, Harley-Davidson's Pan American a run for their money and stuff. Uh, out of Moretta, California, KTM North America is pleased to introduce its 2022 lineup of adventure motorcyclists. Ushering in a new era of rider-focused design and gr uh, groundbreaking technology. Leading the way are the all-new flagship models, the 1290 Super and the 1290 uh, Super Adventure R. That's good stuff right there. What do you guys think? You think that uh, it's really going to be where adventure motorcycles are now the main thing and i gotta admit man i really do i gotta admit i like that pan america man i'm gonna go test ride that sucker this year because it looks really cool getting some off-road get some trails going on i know adam sandoval he did a trail ride it, it, it looked amazing, fun, you know, pull your camp uh, tent out, all that good stuff. So, yeah, I think the adventure market's the biggest thing. And Harley, for once, might have got in at the right moment. Because usually they're, you know, a dollar late, a dollar short with uh, Harley Davidson. So it's good that they're involved in that. I still think the African Twin's going to give them some uh, problems. This new KTM looks beautiful, if you ask me. What do you guys think? Back in the day, we used to call these Enduros. And to see how they evolved since then is just really, really cool. And it's the new generation, which is a good move because dirt bikes are popular again. And why not just crossbreed them into a hybrid and you get the younger generation popping in. And then when you get them, you know, maybe 35 and up, you get them into, you know, a big uh, road uh, bike you know indian harley whatever it may be it's it's a good plan if you ask me a good plan so anyway uh we're gonna go over to the second half of the show on the podcast platforms i'm going live right now over on the morning hoot with uh china Dow. i'll see you guys over there the link to the discord uh servers right in the community chat right there. We're live. We watch it. We talk the whole nine yards. Other than that, I'll talk to you later. Rock on.